I'm not too sure how this one's going to roll, so let's just jump right into it. Two ladies who work with me at the Independence Institute, Megan Polson, thank you for being here. And thank you for having me. Thank you for keeping me employed. I, You're I welcome. appreciate that. <laughs> Cassie Morrow is yep. one of our terrific interns. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Would you it. say that this is the most wonderful experience of your life? Oh, absolutely. Working with me? Yeah, yeah, the true dream. <laughs> and you don't do very well at Cards Against Humanity. I believe that's false, but... You haven't won a game yet. Copal keeps winning. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. The reason I wanted to talk to you two is that you both have two different, very different college experiences. There's a bill going through the legislature now to have a safe space for college speech. Now, I remember going up to see you in Boulder, and there was plenty of safe space to say whatever you wanted, as long as you said something liberal and, and offensive. But otherwise, you, you, you couldn't say anything. You went where? To Chapman University out yeah. in Southern California. All right, so you're right in the heart of it. Yeah. Did, did you have a safe space? What did uh, it look like? Help, my help somebody of my age to know what it looks like today. Growing up, my spa safe space was my bedroom. Um, it seems that all the other students on campus call for rooms with coloring books and places for them to go take a nap. <laughs> Come uh, on, be honest. What, how bad was it? I mean, at, Surprisingly for me, compared to some other colleges, it wasn't as bad. Um, I definitely experienced a kind of silencing, um, but mine was a little more covert, usually through pop popular opinion or... S silencing of what? So I had, I guess I can better explain it in like, yeah. from my story, but I had one professor my last semester there, and it was an arts class. Um, well, so there's your first clue. Your first clue yeah. um, but it was history of photography, so some subjective, mostly objective. Um, but there were a lot of times in that class that she would teach history as her own opinion, her own political opinion. And a lot, I would just kind of sit there, and it was really kind of an awkward situation in that I felt silenced because of that imbalance of power. Because I was, you know, this was my one credit to graduate and it was like, is it worth it to stick up for what I believe in and risk not having that credit? That's what you get for going, <laughs> let's go over here. Okay. You had the opposite experience. Very you went to opposite, yes. Hillsdale, mm -hmm. which, which is, how to put it, a straight-laced, boring school up in Michigan that pumps out people, well, like you, a little goody two-shoes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree, but... All right. Well, what happened there? Um, so safe spaces and trigger warnings and things like that at Hillsdale are only referenced in context of being mocked or laughed at. Um, we don't have coloring books. Uh, your coloring books are your essays and your homework, and that's where you go for your safe space at Hillsdale. Um, people relish people coming to campus to speak who disagree with them. Now, Hillsdale is, is an amazing school. It takes no government money, right. which means it has none of the strings that other campuses have, mm -hmm. and which means the people who go there, they're bound by a certain political incorrectness, which, which I got to think is freeing on one level. Do you feel like you missed diversity, though? I don't think so at all. Uh, there are people, we have all different kinds of clubs on campus. We have all different parts of political views. The thing that bounds all of us is that we actually do believe in the truth of challenging each other and the freedom that comes from that after actually having a real engaging discussion with somebody who you disagree with. Um, even my professors, I don't actually know what my professors believe. Uh, if you say anything in class, you better be prepared to back it up. Because if you say it, they're going to argue with you. So virtue rejoices in the challenge is our motto. So it's the complete opposite of... The what is your motto? <laughs> virtue rejoices in the challenge. What did I say? Sure, sure this wasn't some sort of, some sort of culture or whiff? That just sounds... I, I think mean, so. All right. <laughs> so in Chapman, was there the same sort of challenge me... Um, uh, let's have that fight. I mean, good yeah. academics are always fighting one another. Right. Uh, surviving CU Boulder, I felt a lot of what you felt, which was you weigh whether or not it's worth even speaking up. Is that, yeah. But is that real or is it just conservatives whining? No, I think it's an actual genuine thing. Um, I, following kind of my, um, my frustration with my professor, I emailed her and it was, it was after one particular class where she blatantly just goes, all of race is bullshit. And obviously that's an issue that everyone is, you know, that you have half of America agreeing with that and the other half saying, 
Um, I'm pretty sure that's grounded in biology. <laughs> And so I emailed her and she was like, I can't remember, recall a time that I ever stated my opinions as fact. And so at that point, it was definitely a little disconcerting in that I felt like I couldn't get anywhere by having a conversation with her. Is there, were there any demonstrations on campus? Now that we saw what happened in Berkeley and we've got this bill running through the legislature saying, no, kids have a right to free speech. Yeah. Was there something that would shut down speech? Yeah, so we didn't have a free speech zone ever instituted per se, um, but following the election, there was a huge demonstration, mostly outside of our business school, which is kind of where we're still safe, I guess you could say. What was the demonstration for? It was really, yeah, in protest of the presidency and in protest of the election. and. You know, everyone was out there with their love Trump's hate signs and screaming at people. And I was just sitting there watching, laughing. Um, and, you know, I appreciate that the school does allow for that to happen. Um, my issue arose when I found out that there were other Trump supporters that just in passing, if people found out that there was a girl that got spit on. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Back up. Excuse me? Yeah. Um, I was sitting at home and one of my friends comes back and she was like, yeah, my friend was talking to me about Trump, and as we're walking by, like, the protests are just saying, like, yeah, I voted for him, like, in their own kind of private conversation aside from the protest, and she apparently got spit on. This is, now, this, this happens at Hillsdale all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, is, is there, what I hear over here, and what's always valued, I keep hearing, is we need diversity. We need diversity. Mm -hmm. We need diversity of everything except thought. Is there a diversity of thought at other schools? Because you are on the outlier of a, a school that had none of none of this. Spitting is not allowed at, at Hillsdale, would be well, my guess. Well, it's not that it's not allowed. It's just not, nobody does it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's allowed? I don't know. Let's you can give try it a try. And, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what kind of fights are there at a place like Hillsdale? Um, a lot of fights stemming from ideology, stemming from the way that you interpret something. It's all very academic. It's okay. very rarely personal. Are there, are there people out there who are as liberal as you'd find? Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. Couple in this, girls in my sorority, yeah. In, in this very, very hyper-conservative place, there are still communists. Mm -hmm. Tell me about them. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, no? Well, I mean, there a couple of them I'm very good friends with, and that's the beauty of where I went to school is you can be friends with people and still disagree with them. And it's a really common thing that you hear all over social media and in the news that that's a goal of what we should want. And it's actually very difficult to do in practice. Safe spaces promote running away from people who disagree with you and hiding from them. I worry about people being free to, to make their conversations. I've seen it up in Boulder where they have free speech zones. Now this free speech, it, it cuts both ways. When the DNC was here, we had a free speech zone and those people who got to stay in their little cage and, and do their stuff. But I'm more concerned about people who have a different point of view because the kind of view that we talk about a lot at the Independence Institute, it is not beloved in most colleges. The idea that an individual is a sovereign being, has a right to determine his or her own life, that's not something that people want to talk about. Is it that they can't handle the conversation, or is that the conversation too hard? Why is it that it is so difficult and lonely to be a free marketeer or a libertarian on a college campus? Yeah, I think from what I experienced and kind of what, from what I observed in my classrooms is it's not so much a fear as, you know, we're not being taught as much to not only are we not being taught as much to think critically, but then in response, we are not actively trying to think critically. Um, How so, do you mean? So I really believe in like the John Stuart Mill kind of view of the university where you form your opinions from hearing, after hearing a variety of opinions. And so I definitely had professors that would do that. And I had people in my class, so if we had challenging assignments or something like that, they would take more to complaining that it was too hard or they hadn't been taught that than really trying to think about it and trying to internalize and using other resources to figure it out. So I think that's a huge thing is a lot of people, they're not equipped, well equipped to be able to face some of these other arguments. I get a sense that there's a whole class of people who are paid to be offended. That these are people who fake 
being offended because it works politically. I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you used that word. I can't say you did this. With the election of Trump, I wonder how much of that is a reaction to, to that. The, the idea, you can't say that here, you can't use it in there. And I've been hearing that my entire life. It's no, no big deal. Is there finally a backlash growing? Tell me from the young people point of view, mm -hmm. is there a backlash? How odd is it that free speech, which started on college campuses, have become one of the most restrictive places for, for speech? Um, you want to know how I think that happened? Yeah. Where are we going? Um, I think that it stems from the coddling that tends to happen to my generation and younger uh, when we were growing up and tr always trying to keep, not always trying to keep your kids safe per se, but you know, the, the participation awards and my generation particularly oftentimes doesn't know how to deal with anger well. And so that's where you see this overly offensiveness and this overreaction to things that are really just different viewpoints. And I think that we're headed not to a really great place with it, unfortunately, if we keep going with the Are there college triggers. kids who want, to, who want to do the opposite of getting triggered, that they want they want to say something different? I mean, are there, are there people out there fighting the opposite way? Yeah, it's just, it is very interesting though. I think that it's interesting to see that partisanship appears to have a part of it. Um, because most of the people that I know that are most willing to stand up um, were all part of like the Chapman Republicans Club or you know, part of the business school or from, stemming from places that had fairly conservative or libertarian backgrounds to begin with. There, that's not to say there aren't yeah. anyone else. Because they don't have friends about. anyway. <laughs> Go to the college Republicans. They're lonely. They got nothing to lose. Hey, I was a college Republican. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to say goodnight. Cassie, thank you. Megan, thank you. Listen for me on KHOW Radio. Read me in the Denver Post. Check out the Independence Institute at independenceinstitute.org. And we'll see you next week.